Good morning. We are officially on summer break. And I do have kids um, doing some of their morning jobs right now. That is something that I have to do back there. Do you guys see it? Oh, I don't know. Dun, dun, dun. There we go. <laughs> I have to tackle that uh, school table. We just kind of, just like last year, when we were done, we were done. We just left everything just kind of like right there where it's at. It usually takes me a couple weeks. Uh, we're only in the first week, so I'm good to go. Okay, if you are new here, I'm Jennifer. This is A Country Life. We have seven children. Five of them are living at home. We just graduated our third um, child and she is uh, taking college classes and we have four more at home and those that are living at home our daughter amber is 18 and sam is 15 getting very very close to being uh, 16 then we have joseph who is 11 and peter is 8 and maria is 6. so okay um what i have going today i made a whole list last night of things that i wanted to get done today i did not know that it was going to rain i thought it was supposed to just rain overnight and it's still raining and it is 10 o'clock here this morning and just for reference it's a Thursday so what I'm what I am working on first because I let's see I had to uh, make a bunch of phone calls do a bunch of emails and I think I did every single one on my list so I crossed all those out kids are singing into a fan right now if you hear that <laughs> what I am working on right now even though we are on, are on summer break, I am going to work through this unit um, with the kids. And I'm not sure if you have run across this website before. It's called In the Hands of a Child. And they have, oh, I, I don't even know, 200, 300, I'm not really sure how many different um, curriculum unit plans. And some of them are what they call a notebooking unit, and some of them are lap booking units. So a notebooking unit which is what this one is, the human body. I'll just kind of show you here. It's where they, the kids put together basically just a small binder and they kind of fill things in and they learn about whatever the topic is along the way. So in this case, like I said, we're doing human body and this is the guide. So this says it's going to finish in six days. Um, I don't think that's going to happen. It's probably going to take us a month uh, to get through everything in here, depending on how excited the kids are for this and how exciting, I guess, I kind of make it. I really like these units because they plan everything out for you. They tell you the vocabulary words. They tell you what you need to read. And the, the reading is actually all right here. Whoops, not there. Sorry, I have the reading over on my counter because this is the part that I'm going to be working on photocopying for them to put together their own book. But it comes with all of the necessary reading. You can print that out or do it right from your read it right from your computer. Then within the reading, there's also activities uh, for you to do. Sometimes they're like a little, like almost a little experiment or something. Like for example, uh, activity number seven is heart, I believe, or maybe it's activity five is pulse. I believe what we'll be doing is taking resting heart rates and then walking for like a minute and jumping jacks and that kind of thing so they can see the difference in their heart rate. And there's also vocabulary words. I think I already showed you that. Um, so it kind of walks you through what to do each day. Like I said, we will not finish in six days. So in each on each of these days honestly we'll probably just do one section so like introduction on one day body systems on another day you've got the beat one day cardiovascular system one day that kind of thing what i'm going to do is i'm just going to go through and photocopy different parts of this you once you purchase it you can photocopy for your own family as many times as you need to um uh, and this is not sponsored. They have no idea that I'm doing this. It's just I've used these many, many times uh, throughout our homeschool um, career so far. So I'm just going to work on photocopying and making these uh, whatever I think is most appropriate for each of the kids. And then I'm going to staple it all together in a folder and we'll be good to go.
All right, so I struggled with the stapler a little bit, but I have these done. So for Joseph, I didn't print all of the pages. I only printed the pages where we would maybe be, um, where we could add color and where he could draw something. And then if we're labeling, I did uh, those for him. But if it was just simply writing, I did not photocopy for him. But for Peter and Maria, I did. And um, yeah, so that is what we're gonna do. I just kind of glued on. I hope these uh, hold up the stapler didn't want to staple through such thick packets, but um, you know, <laughs> well, hopefully I made it work. And then I put all of my stuff in here, and here is, so I have the activity guide in here so I know what to do and when to do it. And then here are the instructions for all of the activities. So how to do the vocabulary, what to do for the body systems, what to do for cardiovascular and such. And then if I turn a couple more pages, here is all of the reading. So it just tells you, um, you know, which pages or sections to read. So I'll do the reading to them and then they'll do all the labeling and all that other work. We'll do like one unit in the summer. It just kind of gives us something little to do when people start not knowing what to do <laughs> and they get a little like, bored. Um, that never happens, does it? This is a book about like frogs. Cool. Wait, it says turtles, uh -huh. snakes, uh -huh. lizards, salamanders, and frogs and toads. Okay, and, and what I did never, you find? I at the snakes, and I never knew how many snakes I could read. It's like the hog, hog nose snake. Mm -hmm. And then, I think that's called the ribbon snake. Yep, yeah, you got it. And then, um, a queen snake. Uh-huh, there's a lot of different snakes, yeah. aren't there? This is called a smooth green snake. Super cool. And this this picture is what their belly looks like. Oh. All right, I gotta get back to moving on housework stuff. Peter and I just went down a rabbit hole of <laughs> reading about all of the Wisconsin snakes and frogs, and we learned that we only have one toad, the American toad. I didn't know that that was the only species we had, so that was interesting. Okay, I have to do, I have to do laundry. So I have a load to fold, I just put a load into wash, and then I'm gonna do one more load. I have to do towels today, and that should be it for laundry. It's getting real close to lunch here. I'm getting really hungry, but I just wanted to uh, document this so we can have some proof that Sam knows how to clean a bathroom. <laughs> Look at that. I'm just saying, back here there was literally like mold. You might want to bleep that out, but there was like mold back here. Really? I used this and scrubbed it off. Awesome. It was disgusting. That's why I like you so much. No, it was disgusting. <laughs> sure, show me the one that, that you finished. Yeah, me and you made this one. Yeah. And me and Yep, that was kind of a community puzzle. Nice. And me. Maria's working on some puzzles. Mom. But it is 11.30. I'm going outside. I am starving. The rain is... Done. Not quite done. But um, everyone's getting antsy to go outside. So they are going to go outside and I'm going to work on warming up some lunch. We have some yeah. shrimp tacos left from last yeah. night. So I think Can Sam I and I'll have that. Just a second, Maria. And I think I'm gonna do peanut butter and jelly sandwiches for the little kids and some leftover macaroni and cheese. So, easy, easy. We have this baseball one. Nice. And I couldn't find the eighth piece, but I found seven on the eight, seven of them in the closet. Yeah, we started it. Him and She's like, I can't figure this out, Mom. And then we counted up the pieces and realized that we were missing. 16. Right, I'm 24. I found seven. <laughs> Uh -huh. In the closet, and now I can't find that. Table. You move a lot. <laughs> First you were sitting, then you were kneeling, then you were standing. Now you're <laughs> down. Down and say hi. You gotta, you gotta bend way down. There you go. Okay, so this is what we have here going for lunch. This is Maria's, and this is Peter. He has peanut butter and jelly. Maria's just peanut butter. And then Joe, he likes a whole sandwich, although <laughs> anytime I cut it in half, he always goes, no, 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 no. Um, yeah, but anyways, I cut it in half. And then he has some cucumbers, and he does not eat macaroni and cheese. So 
not because I won't let him, just he doesn't like it. Yeah, Maria said more for me. <laughs> so that's lunches. Sam and I are going to put together some shrimp tacos. I'm going to get that stuff warmed up for us. And then we are going to have a little lunch. And hopefully if this rain, the rain stops. Yeah, I'm not seeing any raindrops right now. Uh, I think we're going to go try to take a walk after lunch. I know it's going to be sopping wet, but at least just to get outside and see what we can see. So now that it's after lunch, I decided to kind of think a little bit more about supper. And Warren had taken out three packs of short ribs. These are beef short ribs the other day. You know how it goes. <laughs> Meat that is maybe not a favorite cut, especially if you buy like a whole animal or something like that. It seems like the cuts that aren't the favorite ones or the ones that just seem to take a lot more time to prepare. They kind of sift themselves down. Well, yesterday I found out that I only have two one and a half pound uh, packages of ground beef left, no ground venison left, and so I have to start getting creative. So Warren took out these beef short ribs and I thought I want to try these in the instant pot. They're not something that I'm overly um, I guess used to cooking up or making here but um, yeah so that's what I have going so what I did is I just cut them apart they come at least in the packages that we got from the butcher they came in three like bones per pack so I cut them up because that's what most of the recipes look like they did <gasps> hello I she's back <laughs> There we go. Ooh, Amber right. just got her hair colored because, you know, her blonde hair wasn't beautiful enough. <laughs> no, nope. it, it was barely even blonde anymore. It was very blonde. I Come know, over I'm here. I'm really happy with it. Come over here. I have to get ready for work. There's I know, but... I know, I know. So, wow, look at that. Mm -hmm. That is just like Not the pretty. blonde that you were when you were a baby. I know. <laughs> okay, back to short ribs. <laughs> That was fun. Um, so this is the recipe. I wish I knew where I printed this. I'll put it in the description box for you guys. I mean, I don't even know if this is going to be good. But here is what I'm doing. So first, I rinse these all. I did not rinse them in cold water because the cold water didn't seem to want to rinse off um, like the little bone, little bits of bone because they were intermixed with fat. So I just rinsed them in hot water. I'm going to just let them sit here for a little while. Then I'm going to uh, put the salt on both sides. I'm going to do these in the Instant Pot. I'm going to have to sear them. So since I have so many here, I think I have three, six, I believe I have nine short ribs here. That's so that is going to take a long time to sear in my electric uh, pressure cooker. So I'll probably get out, actually my big cast iron is right here drying from last night's supper. I will sear in the Instant Pot so I get the flavoring bits in there. But I'm also going to sear them in this great big cast iron because I just want it to happen faster than having to do, I'm thinking I'm only gonna fit two at a time, that's gonna take too long. So, okay, it is drying out just a little bit outside. I mean, the grass and everything is still wet, but I wanna go for a walk, so I'm gonna convince Joseph and Maria to go walk with me. Sam and Peter are down on the marsh working right now. <laughs> Maria says I'm not gonna convince her to go walk, but I will, because I'll tie it into ice cream somehow. We decided to take a bike ride. The chain is off of the tandem. Oh, over the cattle grate. <laughs> Actually, it's a deer grate in our case, but yeah, so the tandem, the tire or the uh, chain was off and I could not lift the bike and get the chain on it. And it was stuck between the sprockets. <laughs> so Joe is gonna have to walk his bike or run his bike. This morning, Peter came in and he's like, there are two geese with so many babies. Oh, we saw. Oh, oh you both saw them? Goose, goose. No. Now, now, and now we're seeing them. We sure are. And yeah, I think Peter's right. There's about 25 babies out there. He's like, I think they stole some from, some, from another pair of geese. <laughs> are you coming along, Joe? You're a hunk? Yeah, hunk. Yes, you are. Hercules. Oh, did you say Hercules? Yes. Hercules. 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 You're goofy. Okay, you get a head start. Go get a head start. So I totally pressed my luck with Joe again. 
he's saying, I can't do this no more. You would think after nearly 12 years, I would figure out that, you know, everything that we do, we also have to do like double time, right? Because we have to do it on the way home too. <laughs> and I always tend to go way too far with him. And then we do this drag, encourage, coax <laughs> until we get home. Come on, Joe, show us what you can do. Are you getting tired? No. No. I can't do this <laughs> we just gotta get up this hill. Guess what? When we get home, we're having ice cream. <laughs> Let's finish strong. Keep going. Finish strong. Stone. I know, strong. Come on. All right, it's ice cream time again. <laughs> and we're working on supper here. So like I told you guys, Warren got out those beef short ribs and I found a recipe and so we're just trying to work through it. So right now he's working on searing all the sides of the beef short ribs. Here are more of them that are done. We have the Instant Pot going. This is only a six quart. I, I, I'm sorry, it's not an Instant Pot. It is the Leck Holmes brand. <laughs> I shouldn't, um, I shouldn't say that. It is, uh, you know, electric pressure cooker. I don't know how many we're going to be able to get into here. We have to, I think we might stand them up. What do you think about that? Sure. Standing them up in here, I think we'll be able to get a few more in here. But, uh, yeah, so we just have to deglaze this. And we're supposed to use bourbon. We had some Jack Daniels whiskey. And then this is some beer as well, like a real dark beer beer so we just mix that I think that's gonna work fine we have to throw some onions on top so is, is that all it's all done. that's all done that and that one. and it is smoky in here <laughs> yep. okay so now we have to we have to do that deglazing do you think this is too burnt to deglaze I feel like if we try to deglaze that that's too burnt mm -hmm. okay so let's deglaze in here. Let me put this back to saute on high. Okay, okay. so oh. she's adding the spices. <laughs> so these spices here, this is paprika and sugar and cayenne pepper. I'm just gonna sprinkle this all over. I was supposed to put it down when I was deglazing, but I forgot to. I think that's gonna be okay though. Okay. And what else did the recipe say, do you remember? We put all the ribs in, all the beef short ribs. I think it's time to have a beer. <laughs> of course. And then, I don't know if we're going to want to fit these all in there. Nope. Not happening. Maybe part of that? That's the onion knife there. Meat, maybe? Sure. Okay. Oh, this is totally busted. Throw it away. Said, oh, three tablespoons of balsamic vinegar. One, two, three. It said six cloves of garlic. <laughs> okay, so the last thing is just some beef stock. I'm gonna pour that over. And I wish I could get these last two in here. They're just not gonna fit. We need to turn this to, we're gonna cancel this out. Make sure that's there. There we go, onto high. And then it said 45 minutes. Mm -hmm. Now it should go. If you have not ever used an instant pot or an electric pressure cooker, it sometimes takes quite a while for it to actually come up to pressure. And then you also have to let it do a natural release on, on probably most meats you have to do that. <laughs> you look so serious looking into the camera. And then, yeah, I'm um, filming here. <laughs> and then um, 
So if a recipe says it's going to be done in 25 minutes, that's a lie <laughs> because it's going to take like at least 15 minutes or 20 minutes to come up to pressure and then you're going to have to allow for that time for it to depressurize as well. So make sure you give yourself plenty of time, which I don't think we did because it's 5 o'clock. This isn't going to be ready for like another hour and 20 minutes or so. That's it. That's all I got. Sounds good. <laughs> Cut. So sadly, all the kids think that this meal smells like burgers and now they're disappointed that that's not what we're having. But what I'm going to make with this, let me just give you guys a quick rundown. I'm going to make some of these hash browns. I'm going to do that in my uh, electric skillet here. And then I have just some random single cans of things. So some French style green beans and then one lonely can of mandarin oranges so i'm going to open those up we'll have that for supper as well uh that's for supper we're gonna make hash browns peter's just in from work did you wash your hands no yeah i didn't think so go wash your hands all right so warren is um taking these out now and they're not as tender as we would like them to be but everybody wants to eat so what i should have or what i'd like to do i guess is put them back in for another 15 minutes but that just takes extra time and everybody wants to eat so we're gonna eat them just the way they are it's kind of all the broth and everything but he had a couple bites and he said they had really good flavor they just could be a little bit more tender so i guess next time i might pressure cook for a full hour right off the bat if i'm doing beef short ribs again Alrighty, guys it's uh, almost 10 o'clock and i want to sit down for the news but i wanted to just show you uh, i did actually put in because if you remember there were two of the beef ribs that did not fit into the electric pressure cooker so after we ate what we wanted for supper and they were still a little bit too tough i thought actually i think we all thought that um i put everything back in here uh, you know what we didn't eat and then the two that didn't fit originally and i cooked it for another one hour uh, pressure cooked it and all of the meat actually seems very very tender i just tasted some off of this bone right there really tender and so i will link this recipe in the description box below it really was a nice way to make the beef short ribs you know it's really always been a cut of meat that we i don't know we just tend to put off making because it just I know it's just not our favorite cut so anyway but i would definitely do the same recipe again because i think the flavor was really good and yeah as long as i pressure cook them long enough now um i'm just gonna get these dishes here quick loaded up and i have about a minute before the news comes on so thanks for watching and we will see you in the next video